Very good afternoon. No summer's high, no warm July, no harvest moon to light. One tender August night, no autumn breeze. No falling leaves, not even for birds to fly to southern skies. These wonderful lines were written by Stevie Wonder in his famous song, I believe you all know. Uh, just like Stevie Wonder lost his eyesight, we have plenty of people who suffered from disability, either mental or physical. Well, the list is endless. We have got Sylvester Stallone, we know Beethoven who lost his uh, hearing capacity and Stephen William Hawking who quoted, look up to the scar stars, not down to your feet. Helen Keller, obviously. These dignitaries, these luminaries have fought with the mental, physical disabilities and they have been able to overcome. In order to know more on this type of disability which people uh, are suffering, we from Asian College of Teachers would like to welcome all of you uh, to this special uh, event of us. Joining with us today, we have a special guest speaker. She is educated from University of Northampton, UK. She is both an MA and a BA from the University of Calcutta. She is a certified in clinical psychology from Malaysian University of Science and Technology. And she is indeed carrying an experience of more than 19 years in the area of special education. A very warm welcome to Ms. Papia Banerjee, a very special guest to Asian College of Teachers. Welcome, Ms. Banerjee. Thank you, Shona. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I have a long association with Asian College of Teachers. Um, when I had started back um, many, many, many years ago, I would rather say around 2002 or three. So um, I also had done a few courses from here and I'm well connected uh, uh, with Asian College of Teachers. It's good to be back here talking to you all. And uh, as you said, uh, thank you so much. And um, as you begin with a wonderful verses from uh, one of the poetry, um, I would just like to talk here, past month end. Um, there is another uh, verse we can just add there uh, for the children with special educational needs is that look up to the sky, the sky is your limit. Yes, definitely. So, uh, I would just like to ask you, uh, Ms. Banji, that as because we know that these children and these personalities have really, you know, fought with either way, either mental or, uh, uh, you know, uh, physical disabilities, problems. So I would just like to ask you that special educators or this, this kind of uh, terms that we generally use, who are special educators and who, what is their background? I think that would be a pertinent question which the audience would also like to um, right. understand. Right. Um, so before I tell you who are special educators and what should be their background, I will right now ask a question to you, Shana. Uh, and just before that, you just said to me right now is that um, as these people have fought with their disabilities, right? And they have come up, uh, touched different areas of the innovation, and have, they have done so fair, they, they did so well, and they have etched their name, you know, in, in all our lives. Um, similarly, Shalak, you must have also had a very good teacher, right? Whom you can also remember from your childhood days. So, yes. a special educator is number one, just a very good teacher. The best teacher for a child is a special educator. And, um, Anybody can be a special educator. And I think um, we all teachers um, have to have that quality of being a special educator, of touching lives to these children whom we are working with. Um, now, categorically coming to the specialization of this particular profession within the education industry, special education is uh, assisting children with some kind of a challenges and it, this challenge could be anything it could be a uh, learning need it could be physical need it could be lifestyle need um, or it could be the mental need of the child and helping the child 
um, to overcome the challenge to support the child in his or her academic journey. Uh, so that is special education or special educators, whoever you call them. And um, what is their background? Of course, they should be trained. They should be well trained uh, to understand what is special education and how they can support these children. Absolutely. And that is why I think that we from Asian College of Teachers, we have a tag name that teach and touch lives. And that is how I think we are starting up like, uh, touching the lives. Uh, thank you. Like, uh, that is wonderful. That is really an uh, uh, insightful answer. Uh, and you know that we from Asian College of Teachers are doing and are continuing and planning to do this type of thing. So just for the information that we are having a previous webinar which is conducted uh, with Dr. With, uh, Dr. Margaret Long, who will be joining us on the 16th of July, just a week ahead. So uh, we will be conducting this type of uh, programs. So, uh, I would also like to answer, uh, ask you is that often we come across this kind of a uh, uh, you know, question that is there any specific or typical certificate or any degree that is required? I understand what you like to do that special educators need to have that kind of a flavor in order to deal with it from anybody. What would be your view that any kind of a degree that is required? So obviously, um, to understand a child, you need to have a well training of uh, you know the what are these needs or what are these intellectual disabilities or multiple disabilities, whatever it is, uh, the challenges of the child. So definitely, whoever is interested in this profession has to undergo uh, these specific qualifications. Uh, well, in India and abroad, there are multiple uh, universities and institutions who are providing such qualifications, which could be a postgraduate certification course, which could be diploma course, which could be a master's, which could be under bachelor's, and which can also go up to the research-oriented um, degrees also. And um, these courses are definitely needed because um, special education itself is a huge spectrum. Okay, so what uh, or um, what you see in one child or a difficulty in one child will not be seen with the other child. So until unless the teachers are well educated or uh, whoever is the you know the facilitator understands this well the teacher cannot work with the specified intervention that is required for the child so a uh, background knowledge is definitely required but i would rather say it should not only be a theoretical knowledge it should also be an application based knowledge so both should be merging together to make an effective special educator Okay, so uh, what I can understand is that uh, certificates will be required like postgraduate, masters or bachelors, but what is more required would be the adaptability capability and capacity, because as you rightly pointed out, student is different and we are different with sensitive I would also like to uh, make a point over there. We often hear the word like who is a shadow teacher. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and, and I see that our, um, like the, if we are getting inquiries and the students are asking specifically on special educator and a shadow teacher. So uh, okay. can you give some light? Uh, what All right. So as I said, a special educator is an educator who understands the various needs of the child. The teacher is well qualified to undertake uh, a group of children. Okay, So a special educator can work one-to-one -one, or a special educator can be uh, working in a department with other set of special educators and they can handle the children. While a shadow teacher is a teacher who is technically working one-to-one -one as a support teacher in the classroom situation, okay, in a school. Okay? And sometimes the shadow teacher can also work outside the school, uh, depending upon the uh, dynamics of the country, the, the local laws, you know, whether it is allowed, whether the school gives the permission or not. And uh, <clears throat> they can work with the children in the evening support 
as well. But whether it is a shadow teacher or whether it is a special needs teacher, what I feel with my set of experiences, these teachers should be qualified. It's not that like I am a housewife and I don't have any job, so you know, um, let me just go and just uh, help a child in school. That would be a bad choice made. Uh, sometimes these uh, shadow teachers are paid by the parents okay, uh, to help their children in the in school learning, but then they usually the parents think, uh, you know, anybody can teach. Let me get a college girl and, you know, as a part timer, she can do this job. So I think that is a wrong decision because uh, it won't help the child anyway. Because we have to understand whether it's a shadow teacher or a special needs teacher, we are working for the child. And definitely that understanding should be there. The background knowledge of special education should be there so that um, the, you get the final outcome, the learning outcome. Or else uh, it would be just dragging on with the child and there, there wouldn't be any kind of a, a real positive outlook. You know? so, right. I, I think that uh, the most important thing which you pointed out is that uh, it should not be just an alternative to anything. It should be focused, directed, and it should be people should have a proper qualification. I, I think that uh, what we, you are trying to point out is that uh, although it is a passion in order to deal with uh, special people, uh, with passion it should be coupled with a proper education. And then only, like, as you pointed out rightly, that just a housewife sitting at home, it cannot be just an alternative kind of a thing. Uh, I would just like to point what you rightly told just before that, that inter, uh, like practical education uh, should be coupled with the theoretical part. And indeed, uh, Asian College of Teachers all across India, we have internship programs across Mumbai, Calcutta, Delhi, Chennai and Hyderabad that we are trying to uh, you know, make our special education workshop as well as online training along with the type of uh, practical classes or at least the observation part which uh, is required, which we are doing. I think that you would agree. Uh, I would just like to have one uh, specific point uh, because you have rightly pointed that in this world when uh, everything is currently moving online like even you are sitting in bangalore we are in calcutta so we are doing an online kind of a live session what would be the role uh, specifically for a shadow teacher if i consider as a special educator coupled with the current online trend which is following i would like to have your views because you have worked for years into the international market i think that would be right. so right so here um let, let me just uh, give you an example of how we are working out here in the online setup. So our company is uh, basically, we are into the teaching part. Okay, and uh, our teachers, we are training our teachers to work on the online version of teaching students mm -hmm. with special educational needs. Now in this, uh, a role of an on a special educator it becomes more challenging on the virtual platform because when you are in schools, you are technically able to handhold the child, you know, work with the child using the manipulatives, uh, using the different, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, showing them the toys, the, the working method, and you're, you're able to stimulate the child in the tactile way. What we see but when we are working in the virtual method there is no tactile way. it's only visual all right so okay. here uh, the teacher's job is double okay but again i would like to say again i'm going back to your first question what is special education special education is nothing it's just supporting the learner uh, learning supporting the learner who have difficulty in a general learning environment okay so whether it's a shadow teacher, a special educator, everybody needs to work together with the regular class teacher to help the child in a special education, with, to help the child with who has who has, who has a special education needs. Now, um, Shalik, you must be knowing that we all keep on saying these words, inclusive education, you know, 21st century inclusivity, inclusivity is a must. So uh, what is inclusion? Inclusion is nothing when you are helping a child 
learn a child with special needs learn in a general classroom and that can only happen when the class teacher and the shadow teacher or the special educator are working together okay so here in virtual world it will be much if you really want to make a difference in inclusivity then there should be a very good coordination between these two teachers so here when i say coordination that means probably the the class teachers or the subject teachers have to share their lesson plan the worksheets a day before to that that particular special needs teacher so that the special needs teacher can work with the child beforehand and make him ready to sit in the classroom you know or have to tailor make certain aspects of the uh, whatever is the in class whatever is the worksheet or the class work or the assignment so that the child gets interested in working because in the virtual classroom setup and this is what we have finding we have come up with many uh, complaints also from many parents uh, in our company that they were saying that you know our children are lost in that 21 25 faces popping on the virtual classroom in google classroom my student uh, nobody is looking at them so what are they doing they are fiddling with the gadgets and you know children are much ahead with us from us they are much ahead so they are fiddling with the gadgets they are playing around with the sound okay um sometimes very easy they are saying we don't have internet connectivity so how do you track them so it is the job of the special educator you know to do that coordination and working and if that goes well you can work then you can have an absolute inclusive classroom setting wonderful views just a quick question uh, we have uh, mr prem anand is asking can we consider the long term long time dropout as a special child i think it's a... okay long time dropout for what okay so it was because you couldn't manage all the 10 subjects that was running for you is that is the reason you um, dropped out so if you dropped out for that reason also you need to uh, we need to understand the background of the child we need to understand what was the reason for such drop out we need to have psych ed assessment done for the child and then only we come to the conclusion that maybe the child has some reason for which he could not do the 10 subjects but then we can tailor made right we can always tailor made and customize the need so that the child at the end of the day can do something for his or her life to the best of his or her capacity so um, special education also involves customization of individualizing the educational need for the child but um, yeah so it depends upon what exactly is the drop out the reason behind it that we have to know right as you know that uh, this uh, reminds me of uh, my personal experience as you know that asian college of teachers uh, are is arranging a five days kind of a workshop for special education so uh, we we have our own panel of experts which we uh, which are brought along uh, in the classes five days of training workshop is being done so i just uh, faced a similar kind of a, a thing which uh, you told that uh, when we are trying to get in a kind of a internship or we are making a kind of an observation going to a specific uh, school uh, it is difficult because even the parents won't allow outsiders because uh, you understand uh, special children are something which has to be very closed and Uh, there is a matter of sensitivity more than the learning part so uh, we have to take a special permission so i think what you rightly pointed out do you think that in this case not only with the uh, students but the parents also need to be educated if not on the theoretical part absolutely yes. absolutely and not only that uh, two three things all the parents should be educated a is that uh, it's it's you have to understand mm -hmm. that if your child also has some kind of a learning difficulty and if your friend's child also have a learning difficulty that does not mean that your friend's child x and your child y will have the same level of difficulty absolutely okay, so Very my cool. friend's child x went to kumon and he now knows maths but that doesn't mean that if i send my child to kumon he or she will do maths good no never 
And second is that parents should be well aware that special education is not a disease. It's never a disease. So I have mm. come across questions from parents asking, okay, so I have done the psychiatric assessment. I, I have a special educator who is teaching my children. So when my child will start reading and writing all by himself and all well? No, it doesn't happen that way. Please don't treat it as a disease. It's just a learning difficulty. And we special educators are supporting your child to help overcome the learning difficulty. But these difficulties are lifelong. Um, please don't go with the notions that this medicine will work, that medicine will work. Please don't do it. Rather help him or her learn comfortably. Uh, work on the mental health. Okay, Special educators should also, uh, as a part of their training, should be well trained about the mental health of the child and also the teacher's well-being we have to look at both the areas okay and um, yeah that's how it should be work it's not a disease so never try to take it as a disease so yes parents training is a must a very good point i would i, I would request uh, Ms. banji has raised a very pertinent thing that it is not a disease and we need to remember i would address the entire audience to listen to this particular it is not a disease and it is not a medicine which is going to get it clear. Laura Sinka has what a very pertinent question which I would like to quickly take on. What key challenges do teachers face when teaching children with special needs and how do they overcome them? Your views, Ms. Ban. Yes. So the key challenge that the teachers face is again, uh, Shona, we have to go back to our that same question is how much they're well qualified and they understand special education, right? So how much they're exposed to that whole spectrum of special education? What are the different special education? What are the different intellectual disabilities? What are the different physical disabilities? They should know that because until unless they know this platform well, they cannot usually connect to the need of the child. Okay, so the key challenge is I would say that uh, what is the course that you are doing? What is the workshop or what is the training that you have been given to be a special educator? So you should be very selective and you should um, know, you know, the how, what is the course, you know, the, the, the module, what is your learning, number A. And number B is we have to understand that these children are different in their learning capacity, not by their physical, uh, you know, growth or any other tantrums of a child or a teenager. They're same. Okay. But then they have a different need when it comes to learning. So how much you are well equipped with the knowledge of this teaching method and the, the, the biggest thing, the biggest strength of the special educator should be patience. You have to have unfold infinite amount of patience to understand. Patience. I, I got it. So I think Laura has got his uh, got her answer right. We have got a quick question, very pertinent because this question was uh, I think it has been brought up. Uh, Anushri is asking if I am a regular school teacher. Uh, will it be good for me to have knowledge about special education? I think I was about to ask you a question that uh, this uh, normal people or the normal teachers need to have and how what would be the level so it will it be absolutely, good for having you absolutely absolutely you should have a knowledge of special education because you are working in an inclusive classroom you have 20 different children with 20 different needs until unless you as a teacher know the learning style or the learning style of your children you cannot connect them with your teaching style a learning outcome only happens when the teaching style and the learning style interconnects. Then only you Absolutely. can understand your child, understand and be the, the successful teacher. Okay. So you need to have a knowledge of special education. And I think it's great if you join and you take a course with it. There is nothing wrong. And we all are learning. There is no end to learning. So you should do it. You should have that knowledge. Thank you for showing this slide because uh, I think what we are trying to point out is that special education, which we from Asian College also face, that it is not only important for me, I want to become a special educator, I have a specific goal now. For every single individual, every school teacher needs to be aware about the degree of abnormality, the degree of disability, and then it can be routed to the specific person. Right. We, we all have knowledge. 
Yes. Padmaj has got a pertinent question asking: How can we support a dyslexic child in virtual classes? Excellent question, uh, Padma. Um, a child with dyslexia, although has reading difficulty, uh, there are multiple technologies which are used uh, in abroad. I mean, used abroad. And right now, we as a company, we have many children who have learning difficulties, and we are helping them with the technological pack platform. If you want to try, you can also try. It's not necessary that your child has always has to read. verbally you know your child can also read orally so use speech to text text to speech softwares you know use audible books use uh, audio methods it's all about learning and learning is not nowhere written in the world that learning always has to be only in the pen and paper method or only reading from a book use mind mapping use note taking use uh, scaffolding use chunk method There are various ways where you can help your child, and definitely there are uh, loads of uh, manipulatives that you can use, and yeah, you can help your child to learn. Absolutely wonderful. We have a quick question coming from Michelle. Uh, she is asking that what is IEP, Individualized Educational Plan? Yes, I think as a special education and uh, Shonak, you uh, the com your company is also running this course, right? Uh, as a you have multiple course of special education needs, and you are also teaching your student what is IEP. I mean, your teacher students. So IEP is individualized education plan, which is tailor made across the curriculum, okay, for the child to learn. Um, simple example, Shonak. Um, today, if I tell you to learn French, okay. uh will you be able to do and say suppose uh you 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 have a difficulty in reading okay some way your brain cannot process reading okay but you have learned language english you have learned one language english and today in your school i tell you no english is not enough you have to have a compulsory second language okay and you need to learn french so from your perspective is it is it easy for you to do french remember at the back of your mind that you have a learning difficulty you have difficulty in processing language so do you think french would be a good choice for you no so as a special educator works with the curriculum and prepares an individualized learning plan creating a short term goal and making a long term goal in the short term goal we start introducing the subject working on the strength of the child and slowly we take it you know more to the higher order thinking skill so what i would do if i am a special educator of course i have to talk to your school whoever is the curriculum provider and i would look at your board whether it's an icse cbse ip ig and i would look for the accommodations that whether i can drop the second language i would drop french for you shona and rather you are very good in maths so i will use that second language period you know taking you out in the library and giving you one more maths lesson because that's your strength and i want to work on your strength so this is what individualized education plan is tailor meeting the curriculum fitting to the child's need right so uh, we got another question i think which uh, which which be very pertinent in this discussion sudarshan is asking if we are taking about uh, i think if you are talking about an inclusive classroom our subject is inclusive inclusive classroom so its identification equally is important to provide the solution absolutely definitely identification is the key and for that reason again i said any teacher should have their uh, you know a, a supporting course of special education needs done because as a teacher if i do not know my student well if i don't identify my students need how can i match my teaching style to the child's learning style okay so i have to identify and that's why special education shouldn't be taken as just okay if i want to join that profession i'll be doing the course i think it should be done by everyone everyone even parents should do it to better understand their child absolutely i think what you talked about that uh, say suppose that i have a problem in terms of understanding language we often come across with this term which is called disability so if i may ask you this question that if you can just uh, cite an example to let us explain between learning disability and learning difficulties 
Like, what would be the line of difference or the difference in that? Right. Right. Um, looking at the current acts, the right to education and um, the universal I mean, and the, the legal framework of uh, uh, Department of Education, since our company is based on UK, I can talk about that. But I can also talk about education policies running in different other countries and Asian countries also. We do not use the word disability anymore. It's nothing a disability. We would rather like to use the word challenges. And if we at all use the word disability, we will use it with as intellectual disability. Okay. okay. So it, it is no more a disability. It's rather we call it challenges and difficulty. Um, yes. So when I'm saying learning difficulty, it is just one branch of the whole of special education needs. Okay. So I may be having learning difficulty. Learning difficulty, when I say, it could be because of my short-term memory processing. It could be because um, I have a reading challenge. I cannot process the words. You know, For me, the words are all jumping away. So they are floating in the air. I, I cannot read it together. That's a learning difficulty. And it's a, just a part of special education. It's not the whole special education. And But rather, uh, the other that you said, it should be said as, learning challenges so when i say learning challenges i could be a child i have attention deficit and hence i cannot learn that's a learning challenge i have a learning difficulty hence i cannot learn that's again a learning challenge i i have visual impairment i cannot learn that's a challenge so we would rather right now use the term challenge rather than disability and these are not disabilities it's just a challenge right and it's not important that everybody has to come first. Somebody has to come last also. And trust me, the last are the best business on the premise. Yes. Isn't it? Bad men do the true. best in their life. <laughs> I remember uh, with this regard, uh, just a quick uh, recap. Like, uh, if you, if the audience might have heard the famous mathematician called Leonard Euler. Euler ha used to work with one eye. And when he was asked that, uh, like how do you do this great mathematical calculations with one eye uh, he re uh, replied that it is i have got one eye so it is less of a disturbance i can concentrate only one because with two eyes there would be more differences so when we are ta talking about this uh, you told rightly that it's an intellectual disability it is not uh, it, it is it, it is just uh, uh, something that we need to overcome so these kind of uh, i would say uh, sensitive issues uh, comes across in a kind of a frame of rule. So uh, I would just request if, if you can educate our audience that in the international market for special education, if I take, are there specific rules that we need to know or aware or abide by those rules? Um, yes, um, education for all, right to learning. Okay, and when I say right to learning, it should be with the best practices. Okay, it's not that, okay, right to learning uh, today, just teaching something and just let it go. No, with the best practices. And when I say best practices, that means the right to confidentiality of the child. Okay, the right to the child's mental well-being. Okay, the right to accommodations. I am I'm, I'm a child with uh, attention issues. I'm, I'm not interested in uh, learning 14 subject. It's okay, no problem. You don't have to learn 14 subjects. Rather, tailor me the subject so that uh, children with attention issues, they are great with, uh, for example, I'm just using an example, they're great with anything which is uh, reasoning skills, analytical skills, okay? But you tell them to study history, they will run away. Because history is boring, sitting and reading. They don't have that sitting tolerance. How do you expect them to sit and read? Don't teach history. It's not needed. Rather, work on those areas where they can really make a difference. Okay. So this is the best practice we are talking about. And of course, in special education abroad, it has it's far. It has moved up. Um, you know, we are using different kind of um, uh, I would say accommodations, giving structured breaks within the examination, giving uh, uh, different devices to write. As I said, I gave an example of speech to, uh, speech to text and text to speech softwares. Um, uh, there would be scribes, there would be computer based work. Uh, the syllabus can be differentiated, color overlays. Uh, there are multiple. And I think um, 
we are working as a country, as this country, what I saw, um, staying back here for the last one year and working with schools here on the special education. Um, we are kind of slowly working towards it. Um, but yes, there are, there are many provisions. So you have to you know, support the child with these multiple provisions, looking at what best suit your child. That's it. That's it. We are approaching close to our time. So just two quick questions to you, Ms. Banerjee. First is that do every special educator need to have a license? And what is this qualification if somebody wants to become a therapist? So uh, license, it is a very much, uh, I would say, a legal framework. And it depends from country to country. OK, but then uh, there is no as such license of a one particular license that will work for all it is what qualification you are whether you're doing a diploma course or a certification course or you're doing a master's or a bachelor's or you're doing a research that's important and second is if it's a therapy based then you have to have again a specified qualification for therapy okay so there the occupational therapist need to have a qualification a diploma or certification yeah. on the, that part similarly as required you suggest that any knowledge of psychology would be an added advantage regarding this it is, it is an added advantage but it is not a must okay that's wonderful that's wonderful yeah. so uh, i would just quickly like to summarize that it has been a great session with miss Banerjee. so uh, we need to work in tandem so the school teachers along with the special educators and not only is the remedy in which we can uh, think for a better future qualification is important because without a qualification and it should not be an option that people would just as you rightly pointed out sitting and thinking that let us do a special education it is not it is a kind of an intellectual disability it is no deformity and there is no specific tool in doing that Asian College of Teachers is doing a program which is called BOFT and we are trying to focus more on virtual online learning methods uh, pedagogies that we use as well as mobile learning. So uh, that has, this has been a wonderful session uh, from Asian College of Teachers. We would like to thank the panel for uh, joining live from your place. Thank you very much for educating us. Obvious not to have enriched in the knowledge. And thank you very much for joining with us and giving us all the answers to the questions. This is all from Asian College of Teaching. Wishing you all stay happy, stay well, and a very goodbye. And again, a heartfelt thank you, Mr. Manji, for joining us. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Sean. Thank you.